Hello everyone, this is Bob Browner with Community Coronavirus Update number 52. The, t the things we'll talk about today are some uh, very good news on the vaccine front, uh, the rise of local leadership, which is also positive, but unfortunately a p couple of uh, scary possible surge scenarios coming up. So the good news is the Moderna vaccine, uh, which uh, released uh, more data uh, the last few days. Uh, what we really need is enough data that someone else can sort of double check their math and make sure it works. And there's enough there that, that literally you can do that. Uh, and so, for example, uh, when they looked at the, the people who were vaccinated, around 15,000, and those who were not vaccinated, around uh, 15,000, and compare the two groups, 11 uh, were infected in the vaccinated group and 185 in the, in the unvaccinated group. And that's how they're saying it's 94.1% infected, because if you divide that 11 by 185, it's 5.9% versus 94.1%. Uh, and so that's good. Uh, the other thing is they've done a good job as opposed to past studies. They didn't always do a good job of, of comparing groups based on gender and ethnicity. They've done that and were very intentional about these vaccines. And so far, the numbers are showing that there's no significant differences based on gender or ethnicity as well. Next will be age uh, to make sure that it still works in an older population who is most at risk. Uh, most importantly is not just getting infected, but did you get in the hospital or die? And so the, they also released numbers on, on severe cases and fatalities. They had 30 severe cases and one fatality, all of them in an unvaccinated group, which is, again, even better uh, information because, you know, I'm okay with an asymptomatic infection. What I'm really not okay with is being in the hospital or dying. And so that's enough to say that it's statistically significant. So next step is for uh, you know people to go through the data and make sure that nobody's fudging the data, for example, looking at uh, how they were diagnosing, how they were capturing to make sure things was accurate. But it's looking really good. And so I'm at the point now where I'd be ready to get in line for this vaccine. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be probably till March, April, May for most of us to get the vaccine, but healthcare workers in December. Uh, so what do we have to do then, until then? So I keep using this uh, from James Lawler and all, everyone else. All of us in public health are saying we already know how to control this thing for the next couple months. we got to uh, keep gatherings of 10 people or more away unless they're in a safe environment. We need to lower numbers of students at schools, which we've mostly done in most schools. Everybody needs to be aware of mask. Uh, the dining bars, restaurants, clubs, that stuff's just got to stop for a while. Um, so we've got some uh, other problem challenges coming up. One is just not the best data right now. Uh, so you may have noticed, or if you, well, probably most people didn't notice, but the number of staff beds available for the hot, for the state dropped. Well, I think there was a miscategorization. Uh, they probably didn't realize that needle needle intensive care unit or labor and delivery beds cannot be used as available coronavirus beds because sick baby, premature babies and moms have to have babies. You can't stop that. So those should not be in there. So they did take those out at least. Uh, the good news is it looks like hospitalizations have plateaued a little bit. The question, of course, is why? Uh, I've asked uh, physicians I know across the state what they're seeing and why, why did we slow down like this. Uh, it's not because we have fewer sick people. They say what the, what's happened is we're getting better at taking care of some people outside of the hospital. Uh, and so what used to be a low threshold for admission, like anybody positive at a nursing home was automatically would send, be sent. Uh, now they're actually trying to figure out, well, can a larger nursing home create its own sort of, sort of COVID wing? So if people aren't very sick or if there are uh, people who aren't going to be wanting to be on a ventilator, let's manage them at the nursing home for a while. So what we're doing is finding other ways to manage people outside of the hospital. And that has uh, given us a little bit of a reprieve on the hospital front. Unfortunately, the doctors and nurses respirators there are still saying that they're still overwhelmed. Uh, again, it's not number of beds, it's available staff. And we, I think we are pretty much are at peak staff already. And so we can't take many more than right now. Um, uh, as far as dashboards go, I actually like uh, some things. Lancaster County uh, Health Department has added uh, more detail to its dashboard, including not just hospitalization, but hospitalizations for people who live in the county versus people coming from surrounding areas. So you get a nice trend line here. And, and uh, I think this is a nice looking dashboard. Um, uh, one of the problems, though, is our data as a whole is going to get tough, and so there were some articles this past week about this, about how, unfortunately, uh, you'll see a lot of spikiness in our data because things aren't entered over the weekend. Well, we just had a holiday, and so several, some of the days for both running tests and getting tests disappeared, and so you're seeing sort of two holes here. Well, is this because of Thanksgiving weekend, so is this a real drop, or is it an artifact of the fact that there were less tests run, run over the Thanksgiving weekend? Uh, it's especially a case I'm, I'm finding uh, from rural Nebraska, where my family is out west, uh, they can only get tested on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So when Thanksgiving is on a Thursday, they lost uh, at least a third of their testing time. And it's taking people a week to get a, into a test and get a result out there. So there could be a big lag. So how's the state doing? I actually don't think we'll know for another week yet. We'll have to wait for the, the Thanksgiving backlog to work its way through. 
Um, but the rise of some local leadership. So uh, the hospitals have taken it upon themselves to put together uh, the overwhelmed plan. So if things get really bad, we are going to have to ration health care and some people are not going to get treated, sort of like a military triage situation. It's a little scary, but the plan's in place and at least it'll be organized and it'll be fair. Hopefully we do not have to pull this plan out and have people die from lack of medical care because we ran out of resources. But it's bad enough they created the plan and it's there. Um, other good news, though, is that uh, although the governor will not let the health departments create their health department rules based on what needs to be done in their communities, uh, multiple cities have now taken it upon themselves to, to step up and, and do what needs to be done. So seven of our ten largest cities now have mask ordinances, and so that's a nice positive development that uh, people have figured out ways to do this legally and take matters in their own hands until the state decides to do the same. Uh, the other thing is I think we are seeing, I think, some... Uh, reduction in rates because people are taking this more seriously. And I, I would say the big reason for that is that the healthcare f folks and hospitals and doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists have take their direct their, uh, their message directly to the consumers. And so kudos to both Brian Health and Nebraska Medicines for putting out some great PSAs the last few weeks. Uh, I think this is getting people's attention because, you know, people unfortunately, for better or for worse, don't trust politicians, but they do t trust their doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists. And so I think these are very effective ads and I think they're finally driving it home no, this is not a hoax. This is real. These are people dying every day uh, in our ICUs. And I think this messaging is very effective. And so kudos to Brian Health and Nebraska Medicine for pushing this stuff out there. Um, over the weekend, uh, this interview with uh, Brett Greer and uh, our Surgeon General Adams, Fauci, I'll point out that several of these are Trump appointees saying this, but uh, they're telling us we got to worry about a, a couple surges coming down the pike. Uh, Brett Greer, Admiral, who's uh, on some logistics, going through some logistics numbers with 95,000 people hospitalized. 20% of all hospital beds in the entire country are full, full of coronavirus. Uh, and the last thing we need right now is, is people being a less cautious. Uh, uh, the Thanksgiving, we'll see how bad that is. And Senator and uh, Surgeon General Adams uh, said basically, you know, the science is out there, has never been stronger to support the wearing of masks. It should never have been politicized. Unfortunately, it is. And this is our way to get through this is wearing masks. Um, you know, New York Times, I do like uh, how they kind of line their, their data up. Uh, again, I don't know for sure how much of this is real versus not. Again, same with like some of the deaths don't get entered. Some of the death certificates also don't get entered. So you see this big drop, but then this big spike coming through. So we'll, it's going to take another week to see what the death rates are really looking like. Um, and if you look at nationally, uh, basically, unfortunately, we're headed back to the spring. Uh, uh, we're getting fatality rates uh, over 2,000 a day at times. All these spikes are because you know, death certificates just don't get entered over the weekend. That's why. And you're seeing a bigger lull for the Thanksgiving, so things didn't get entered. So you're probably going to see a big spike in cases here that didn't get entered here. But long-term trend, unfortunately, we're headed right back to where we were uh, in the bad days of uh, April and May. So, uh, you know, we crossed 1,000 dead Nebraskans last week. It's a sad threshold. Uh, every one of those pe are real people with real stories. Uh, Nebraskans, uh, unfortunately, it looks like we're likely to hit 2,000 by early January at the rates we're going. Uh, hopefully, we'll start changing course and not making some mistakes, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, let's really not hit three to 4,000 dead Nebraskans. Uh, we have a vaccine on the way. Uh, we're literally talking months of, of if we got serious about this finally and took it seriously and got an organized plan, we could keep it down to 2,000 dead Nebraskans and avoid three, four, or 5,000 dead Nebraskans. So, like I've said, we can stop this. We need to enforce mask ordinances. We need to shut down the bars and coffee shops and things for a while. We need a temporary halt on extracurricular activities like basketball. Uh, this is what we need to do. Uh, but we have three surges we got to worry about. Thanksgiving has already happened. We're not going to know how bad that was for another week or two because of the legs and data. The next surge I'm really worried about, most worried about, honestly, through December is youth sports spreading it through every place else. And then, of course, then we got Christmas where the same thing will happen for Thanksgiving. And so the scenario, one of the urgent care doctors I know calls them the Uncle Buck scenarios where Uncle Buck came over for Thanksgiving and maybe it's not Uncle, maybe it's Cousin Vinny or Aunt May, uh, but people just misunderstand, either A, misunderstanding how this works or B, flat out lying, which both, he's had both cases happen. So sometimes people misunderstand that if you have an exposure on Tuesday and you get tested on Saturday it doesn't, and it's negative, it does not mean you're in a clear. It takes up to 14 days for you to turn positive. So a negative test on Saturday doesn't mean you're going to be positive that you won't be positive on Sunday. And so this is what was happening, has happened over Thanksgiving. There are people who got tested on a Tuesday, it was negative. Then they went to Thanksgiving on a Thursday and that's when they got sick. They had a false assurance and there's this really common misunderstanding. You cannot test your way out of quarantine. A test is only temporary. A test says whether you're infectious right now, not whether you're, whether you're 
whether you have coronavirus or not. It takes up to 14 days for you to turn positive. Uh, the other scenario, though, is sometimes Uncle Buck just flat out lied. He went playing poker on a, on a Saturday. Yeah, he got tested on Wednesday, and maybe maybe he actually did get tested, maybe he didn't. Or he got tested, but a test isn't ne- back yet. He said it was negative, but it wasn't, and then he exposed everybody on Thursday. Uh, and so this is the scenarios we're having, or the, or the relatives who show up who have not been careful, uh, who simply don't understand. You cannot test your way out of quarantine. You have, it takes up to 14 days. Uh, my next biggest worry, though, is over the next few weeks is youth sports. And in, in, uh, in Lincoln, we have shut this down for a while. There is just not a way to keep youth sports safe if you're playing a normal basketball game. Uh, even if everybody was wearing a mask, there's going to be people occasionally going nose commando. It's going to be, it's going to be, you're going to be huffing and puffing, bringing this out. You're so close. Uh, you could do things like maybe just dribbling drills or playing horse. But uh, if you're playing active uh, basketball and, or you know, wrestling or probably hockey, uh, I would say if you are going to let your son or daughter play this right now in, in Nebraska, you are, you can pretty much assume that your child will get infected at some point and bring it home to you. The problem is, is that your child may be asymptomatic, so by the time you know that you've got it, that they brought it home, it won't be until you yourself are infected. Uh, and so realize that's likely what's going to happen. And uh, kind of reviewing this from last week, let's say the Sydney Red Raiders varsity basketball team goes and plays Scott's Bluff. That's 12 athletes on each varsity squad. Uh, they did the van ride on the way. Uh, odds of at least one of those students being positive in those communities is in 30 40% that one of those 24 kids is positive. They're going to spread it to most of the others. Then they're going to bring it home to you. Uh, this is going to happen, and there's just unfortunately no way around it for contact sports. Uh, the other thing you keep in mind that people seem to keep forgetting about is cardiac clearance, that uh, coronavirus can cause some heart problems uh, in kids. So if they have a moderate severe infection, they need to be cleared to, uh, by their physician and potentially a pediatric cardiologist before returning to play. So uh, keep that in mind as well. Uh, and then Christmas, of course, we'll ha- and New Year's, we'll have those same Uncle Buck scenarios. Is Uncle Buck really being careful, or Aunt May, or, or Cousin Vinny? Uh, be really careful when you have the family together. Uh, to, to, to safely uh, get together, you would really need to self-quarantine for 14 days. Uh, some rapid testing, if it were serial testing, might be helpful, but it is still not available and not ready for prime time, unfortunately. Maybe, maybe the country will get its act together, and that will be available next month, but I doubt it by Christmas. Uh, so lastly, this is going to be a tough time, but we need to be very careful the next three weeks. And so let's turn things a little positive. Uh, I really uh, I love our restaurant scene in Nebraska. I want to support it. Uh, but right now, unfortunately, it's not safe to go eating at a restaurant. So I like uh, this is a, a group. Uh, Phil Boucher is a pediatrician now and some others have put this together, uh, sort of trying to figure out how we can, one, support the people who are really sacrificing uh, to, to help with coronavirus and two, support our local businesses. And so what they've done is they're creating sort of a crowdfunding site where you can donate or nominate uh, to support a healthcare worker, support staff, teacher, first responder uh, by sending them flowers or giving a, a gift certificate. And so it's a way to one, help, help those uh, businesses that are going to be hurt by the interventions we need in place, but also support the ones who are really putting their, their lives online to help out. So uh, I think this is a real positive way to turn some things that, you know, if, if you're not going to be... Uh, don't be part of the problem, at least be part of the solution or support those who are. And so, uh, so uh, take a look at this web- website um, and, uh, and uh, maybe consider donating yourself. Uh, so hopefully this is all helpful to you. Uh, again, the disclaimer, it's my opinion, of course, and not necessarily everybody's, but this is where I work. So you know that I actually do have a day job and, and I'm not just a YouTube conspiracy theorist. So here you go and uh, stay safe out there.